Hello there guys, welcome back to Unistalks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well, I'm not to an extent, I'm not, um, Worry has crept in now properly and I can't catch a break, personally I can't catch a break with the football world, I can't. You know, Chelsea have been through all the struggles that they've been through. We've seen what we've gone through. It's just not been nice, right? Um, and we'll see what happens going into next season. We have to draw um, an end to what we've seen and, and, and we turn over a new leaf and hopefully things get better. Yeah, we can only do that. With my countries, I don't even want to talk on the Algerian side. We've already seen what's happened there. The Africa Cup of Nations was a horrendous uh, experience. And, and going from that, nothing's changed, including this weekend. And now I'm seeing England. And England have just... We've just gone to pot. <laughs> this is just horrific. What in the blue hell did we witness yesterday? What was that? I'm going to start off with England. Because the Euros are coming up. It kicks off next weekend. And um, the club side of things, I will address a couple of things towards the end of this video um, that, that need to be mentioned. And then later on today, there will be a second video where we go through all the day's happenings and we'll see what happens from now up until then. So make sure you're subscribed if you are not already and hit the notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Let's get, let's get right into it. England yesterday for the second time in a row. We've not played Iceland since we lost to them in 2016, is it? We've not. And I, I don't think we have anyway. Um, I don't remember us doing so anyway. And we've gone and lost again. We lost back then and we lost last night. And that was a horrible game. This is meant to be the final game going into the Euros. Preparation going into the Euros. The final chance for England to play before things get serious. And that is what we watched. A 1-0 loss to Iceland, and we didn't even see anything. You know, some people are going to say, Eunice, don't worry, it's a warm-up, it's a warm-up, it's a warm-up, it's a warm-up. I want to pay attention to one thing before we start getting into this point alone. Check this out. These are England's last five fixtures, including the Iceland game. We, we drew to North Macedonia, in November 2023. We lost to Brazil at home, 1-0, where Endrick got the winner, we remember. Three days later, we drew 2-2 to Belgium. Then we beat Bosnia and Herzegovina the other night, 3-0, right? And then we went and lost to Iceland last night in that manner. Now, a warm-up fixture should be a game where you still get to see the blueprint of what is cooking, what is going to be used. Different systems, different combos, different players, different... You know, you start to really understand where is the team heading into the tournament. That's a warm-up. Yesterday, we didn't warm up. That wasn't a warm-up. We didn't even get out of bed. You know, a warm-up, a warm-up means that you actually warm up. Yesterday... We barely even jogged. It's like me going to a gym and just standing there. I've not actually done, I've, I've turned up to the gym, but I've not actually done anything. It's not a warm up. The best description I can give of this as a warm up is if you try to turn on a Nissan Micra from 1995 that's done 200,000 miles on the clock and you're hoping it's gonna turn on in minus 15 conditions. It's not turning on, brother. <laughs> it's not going to turn on. Yesterday, was an example of that. At least if we lose, but you see, maybe we missed 15 chances. Maybe we, we were just unlucky. You know, that at least can be defined as a warm up. You know, if you're, you, you have some players that are playing a certain way and then you try a different system. You bring on complete other players and you try something new. You change the shape. You go to a different formation. You change something completely different. Fair enough. That's testing the grounds before going to a tournament. Be honest. Did we see any of that yesterday? We saw nothing. We saw, this is what's scaring me. We saw nothing. We saw nothing. There was one Harry Kane chance that we saw. 
where he missed from like five yards out, ball into the box, and he tapped it and he went over the bar just, right? That was the only proper action that we saw throughout the game. We had one shot on target. You call that a warm-up? That's not a warm-up. At Wembley as well, at home. And now we're going to head out to a tournament. Now, I will say, I will say, that a friendly doesn't define what you're going to do at a tournament. We all know that, right? But going into a tournament, playing like this, right? I'm sorry. If we're going to show up in this manner at the Euros, we might get knocked out the group stage. Quarterfinal at best, at best, before we get sent home. This is what I want to focus on. The leaps and bounds we have to see compared to yesterday as to what we need to do at the Euros is astronomical. It's astronomical. We need to literally flick on a switch and all of a sudden everything turns complete 180. Is that going to happen? It's not looking good, bruv. It's not looking good. It's not looking good. And why? I'm going to take back everything I said on Gareth Southgate yesterday. Remember I was talking about Man United wanting Southgate and look, if he wins the Euros, maybe his stocks go up. That's a, fa that's a fallacy. Forget I said that. Forget I said that. That's in the bin. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. I take back every word. United, if you want Southgate, you're pleased to him, mate. Have him. <laughs> Have him. You know what? Actually, Southgate in. Yeah? Ten Hag out and Southgate in. United, you will be doing yourselves a favour if you got yourselves Gareth Southgate. Please go ahead and get Gareth Southgate. He is the man. He is the man for you. He is the man. Yeah? Ten Hag? Nah. Get Southgate. You're going to be much better with Southgate in. You know? Man United are a club of great stature. Yeah? Huge, huge prestige. Huge heritage. This is football heritage. As Jose said, this is football heritage. United want the best, go and get Southgate. Yeah, man, go and do it. Because as far as I'm concerned with England, look, if he went to United, I just wouldn't be worried of United. That's why I'm, that's why I'm advocating, because I would want Chelsea to climb over. You know what I mean? I, as an England fan, as an England, as, as an English, I think Southgate's going to send us right down the river. Honestly. His ways are, are what continues to hold England back. It just is what it is. Because even yesterday, even after going 1-0 down, that would have been the perfect opportunity to unleash England, change the shape, allow the men that need to be in that front line to be in that front line and give them license to kill. And we didn't see that. We did not see that whatsoever. Whatsoever. Everything was rigid. Even the players were not comfortable. It did not look like anyone was comfortable. It looked like everyone was confused. And I have to ask as well, in terms of the players, there were, there were some performances last night that were atrocious. Absolutely atrocious. So this is just not looking good. But Southgate does not hold the capacity to change a game. That's the worrying factor here. That's the concern. It takes a defensive team to set up against England and catch them on the break, and boom, the defence is actually quite brittle. That worries me too. The English defence is pff, not very good. Not very good. John Stones yesterday for that goal was caught sleeping. Sleeping. And I expect better from someone like John Stones. Um, that right-hand side was open. The, the, you, you could say maybe the goalkeeper was at fault too, but not really. It was just it was completely open. Midfield allowed the red carpet to, to completely bypass them. It's just not good. So when that happens, you expect the manager to try and do something about it. Gareth Southgate does not have the capacity. If England have a game going for them, they have it going for them. Cool. They'll ride it. If they don't have a game going for them, they're screwed. They're stuffed. And that's not going to win you the Euros. And that's not going to get you far. So heading into a tournament like this, I have to say, for the first time in a while... This is a new um, area, I would say. Normally we go into tournaments feeling, yeah, come on England, I I'm not feeling anything, lads. Don't know about you, I'm not feeling a thing. Especially after seeing that yesterday, I'm worried. <laughs> I am worried. I'm going to be watching that first game against Serbia. We play Serbia, I'm going to be like this. Just waiting for something to happen, like I'm, about, like I'm at a bus stop, waiting for the bus to arrive. 
We'll wait and see what happens. We'll wait and see. Can the lads switch on? Can Southgate get something? Oh, it's not looking good. Let me know your thoughts down below. I want to ask you your preliminary predictions, right? Your predictions. Um, I think I'm going to do a Euros prediction video. I want to try and see how I think it's all going to go down and who I think will make it out of the groups and who's going to go all the way and who's going to win it. I'll do a prediction video. But let me know about England. Your honest predictions in the comment section below. How far do you honestly think England will go? Honestly, if you want to say we'll go and win it, go and win it and, and comment below why. If you think we're going to get knocked out of the group stage, say it and why. Let me know down below. Much appreciated. Let's move into club football. Um, and a bit of the news. Here's the latest coming out of Napoli. Napoli director of sport Giovanni Manna has made the first offer to Chelsea for Romelu Lukaku and it is an initial fee of 12.7 million plus 2.5 million pounds in add-ons. Are we idiots? Or If I'm Chelsea and I receive that offer, I'm sorry, I'm insulted. On one hand, I can understand. It's Lukaku. Yeah. I mean, flipping out. Who, who would want to pay money for Lukaku? I go, well, except Conte. But this is a, hor it's a horrible fee. Horrible fee. Come on. Come on. 38 million is the fee. Pay up. If you want him, pay up. What is it with these clubs that don't want to pay? You know, like, no, honestly, like, like, Borussia Dortmund don't want to trigger the release clause for, for, for Ian Matson. They're trying to offer like 20 something mil. Just, just pay the 30. What are you doing? Or 32. Is it 32? But pay the money. If you want to pay a player, pay the money. If there's, if there's a clause there, if there's a limit, pay it. Pay it. To go this low for Lukaku, we want 38 million. They're offering 12.7 plus two. But you're offering a 50 million package. Are, are, are we idiots? Come on. You could at least, at least 38 million, at least offer 25. At least. Make it somewhat considerable. That's the latest coming out of Italy. It's coming out from Repubblica. Repubblica is an Italian outlet. Now, We'll see what happens, what transpires. But that's a horrible first offer. Let's see what goes down. To wrap up, because there's not been much news up until now, but there was the England game and I had to mention that. But let's end on a positive note, on a very nice note, a, a note that's very nice to see. This is coming out of Brazil, Rio de Janeiro. So, Thiago Silva was unveiled yesterday in the stadium. 55,000 strong giving Thiago Silva and his family a huge homecoming and a huge welcome back to O Monstro himself, Thiago Silva. I'm very happy for him, very happy for his family. The first initial scenes were just absolutely incredible. I mean, look at this. It's just ridiculous, really. Um, crazy scenes. All sorts of madness that ended up kicking off. A huge presentation was given and Thiago Silva and his family were given a hero's welcome and a huge welcome back. Very happy for him. Congrats to Thiago Silva. As I said, go and smash it over there, my friend. Go and win the league and we hope to have you back at Chelsea in some form or capacity in the near future. So there we are. It's a shorter one today, but mainly about England. It's worrying times. That was a horrible game last night. Let me know your thoughts down below. Much appreciated. And I will catch all of you later on for video number two. So make sure you're here tonight as we go through the day's news. What happens from now up until then? Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Check out the socials on screen and in the description. And I'll see all of you tonight. Have a good one, people. See you a lot then. Take care and peace.